the discussion from the outset of the show with preview of the game. But we'll get there. We'll get there. And and it is week eight. I'm not going to say I can't believe it's week eight. I can believe it's week eight. The calendar tells me it's week eight. But the season, as it always does, is moving quickly. And the big news yesterday came out of the blue, but anyone who watches this show or listens to it was not surprised. We talked about it on Tuesday. Brock Purdy, the 49ers quarterback, got rocked on a quarterback sneak late in the game. Here's Kyle Shanahan, head coach of the 49ers, announcing that Purdy is in the concussion protocol. Well, he started getting symptoms on the plane. Uh, so we found, found that out when I, we landed. We were all pretty asleep, but then he got all checked up today, and I was, or yesterday, and now he's in the protocol. Uh, does he have enough time to clear protocol in order to be available for the game on Sunday? Oh, yeah, he does have enough time. He's just he's got to go through the process. When you watch the film, where do you think he hurt himself? Quarterback sneaks, maybe? Uh, possibly. Uh, we're not, we don't know for sure because um, he didn't start getting into the plane, so I don't know exactly, but I'd probably guess that. If he's not clear by Friday, would you say he hasn't practiced? So, uh, you know, does, do you do that? Or? No, I mean, Brock didn't take a practice drive versus um, Seattle on Thursday night football till pregame warm-ups, and they had to shut those down a little bit, too. So he didn't really get a real rep that week till play one. And you've played pretty good, so we'll probably stick with that. You know, we talked earlier this week about how the league has gotten lax with injury reporting. It's also gotten lax with a rule that coaches aren't supposed to say anything about when a guy may come back from a concussion because anything that is said could be interpreted as some sort of pressure to get the guy back on the field, even though ultimately it's an independent doctor that makes the call. And there's the play. It was the third and short. The field level doesn't show it. I noticed it watching the game. Jordan Hicks comes in hot, helmet down, and blasts Brock Purdy in the face mask area. I was concerned from that moment. We talked about it Tuesday. I watched him very closely the rest of the way to see if anything was amiss. He threw both interceptions after this hit. But how do you not get affected? Look at how the neck snapped when that helmet came in and hit Brock Purdy. So to no surprise, the only thing that surprises me, Chris, is no symptoms emerged until the flight home. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes it's just it's as simple as a headache, right? And feeling maybe a little woozy or just not yourself that way. And that emerges the adrenaline, the blood flow of the game, the intensity of the game. Sometimes, you know, you, you could have a headache or whatever else in the game. You don't even really realize it because you're just so focused on the task. I, I did see some of the things he said post game press conference. And I, I remember thinking he's fine. He's yeah, fine. Right. Right. Fine. You didn't see anything there that like you went, oh, yeah, he just seems a little off or he's a little, you know, r- remiss about some things or whatever else there. But, you know, it goes back to something we've talked about a little bit, you know, throughout time here with this tush push is, hey, this is going to be one of the ways to defend it. This might be the only way that's going to scare, you know, some teams away from it. And Hicks, yeah, lowers the head. I'm not mad at him. It's the only thing he can do. People are around his legs and his body, and he's going to try to get a shot at the quarterback, let alone Harrison Smith comes in a little late and tries to get another one. Yeah, go ahead. What? Hang on. Before, yeah. <laughs> before we end up creating a 45-second clip that's going to be everywhere on Twitter today, Chris, Jordan Hicks lowered his helmet and made forcible contact with an opponent. He's getting fined for that. And if he doesn't, he should. He lowers his helmet and goes in, rams in hot. I don't care what play it is. You're not allowed to do that. It, it rarely gets flagged because they don't see it in real time. But... I will not be surprised at all. I'll be surprised if he doesn't get fined for coming in, helmet down, and ramming Brock Purdy. And second, Chris, it wasn't a quarterback push play. It was just a quarterback sneak. Yeah, regular sneak. quarterback Christian sneak. Christian McCaffrey's yep, back right. there. It's just a regular quarterback sneak. It was inartfully done. If you're going to do a quarterback sneak, you don't stay high. He stayed high, and it was open season on the quarterback, and that's what defenses are going to do. The next play is the one where he did the Tom Brady, I see a crack, I'm going to dive through it. You don't get injured that way. It was the one we saw where he tried to go high. Don't go high. Whether it's quarterback push, whether it's quarterback sneak, what are you doing going high? They can't help it sometimes. You're inviting a defense. You can't help it. That's why I hope Jordan Hicks doesn't get suspended or fined either. There's nothing he can do. 
There's the what? How? What? So what's he gonna do? Touch him with his hands as he goes by? No. Like uh, people are at yes. his body. The only thing he has a chance to hit with is this right here. And then and also Brock Purdy's going and in head first foul. with his head it's down. Well, Brock Purdy's head's down right. too. You know, it, it's it's that to me well, is too much nitpicking there. If that's the way it's gonna be, the only way you can stop it is going well, in. Can we show it again? head first? Show it again. Yeah. Right. Show it again. Yeah. But you're not allowed to go in head first. That's the problem. Mike, they they, the they let they ago, they say a lot of things aren't Watch allowed Hicks. and they're allowed all the Watch time. Hicks. You know, you're not allowed to Watch lower Hicks. your head as a ball carrier, right? I Watch mean, it gets Hicks. away with it all the Watch time. Hicks. Fine. What? I don't they get care fined for it. They right. get fined for what it. else is he supposed Chris. to do? Then they have to Chris. stop the play. Hang you're on. not allowed. Hang on. Yeah. Hang on. You were in the meeting in August when they made it clear to us the amount of fines for players lowering their helmets and making forcible contract dwarfs the number of flags that are thrown. It was shocking to me. Yeah, I the know. They love to take players' money. I and know. the warnings. Yes. Well, but my point is, he's getting fined for this. Okay. And I understand from a pure football standpoint, what the hell else is he going to do? The people who make the rules would say, anything but lower your helmet and ram Brock Purdy in the head with it. But when, the, the when the QB sneak out. guy has his head right. down, like I, it's hard. Where else are you supposed to hit him, Mike? What are you supposed to do? See, these are things that's just it's over talked about. I don't care that he hit him in the head I, or I'm did any of that. Telling you. I don't. It doesn't right, matter. Hey, it's the only the thing that's available to hit John him with, Runyon Mike. Is. Then we got to take quarterback sneaks I, away, Mike. You can't do it. You know, their head's out there. And well, a lot the, of the, there's but, no other place to hit them, but Mike, there's no other body part you can hit them. They're engulfed by people. The only way to stop them is go up high, and unfortunately, up high is where the head lays. So I, I don't really have a soft spot here for anything there. Now you're right; he'll probably get suspended, or it means fine. But I I don't agree Not with suspended, that either. Fine. Yeah, I don't yeah. agree with that either. Now now look, but the the whole purpose of this is to get players away from using their helmets as a weapon. And the difference is very simple. You go in with your face up versus you go in with your helmet down. He drops the helmet, and this rules for his safety too, to prevent Jordan Hicks from having a neck injury. Drop down that helmet and ram it into Brock Purdy. Whether it's, I have to stop this guy, whether it's open season on the quarterback, which you know the defensive players are thinking about, even though if you say it out loud, they cancel you. That's part of football. Open season, free shot on the most important player on the field. We know the defensive players think that way. They've thought that way for decades, and they used to talk openly about it pre-Bounty Gate. Since Bounty Gate, it's something you got to tiptoe around. But that's part of the reality. Yeah. And my point is, they've outlawed that maneuver. And we saw it get used in that moment. It's going to be interesting to see what the NFL does about it. Because Hicks, it's the classic. It wasn't, if it was in the open field, we would have called it targeting. But because he was in the scrum of players or the mall, as the rugby purists would insist we say, it's less noticeable. But you know it when you see it. When the player goes into that posture of helmet down and shove your body, that's what he did. And I know Purdy had his helmet down but he wasn't doing it into someone. He's just trying to get the yardage. Hicks comes in hot, helmet first. And, you know, the point is, that's apparently what caused the concussion. I know we're not supposed to speculate on injuries, but we know he's got the injury. Now we're going through the forensic process of figuring out how it happened. And I watched that whole game. I only saw Brock Purdy get hit. Yeah, the that's the only one once. that jumped out to me. And it right. was that one. Right. And I think yeah. Shanahan kind of alluded to that, too. You know, and, and again, I'm not for trying to hurt players or do anything like that, but there's very we're, – we're getting to the point here where we're taking away all avenues from the defense to, to do certain things, and that's where I have a problem. I mean, yeah, you, you know, that that's where I don't love the fine aspect here. If he comes in face first, leading with his head, they're probably still going to fine him. It doesn't really matter because they're going to say, well, he launched at his head. He tried to hit him with his head. He still he used his – so, Lower his helmet. So, uh, yeah, I, I get that. But he's still lowering launching, the helmet. He's still launching launching at the other guy's head. I mean, that's what he's doing. But he has no other choice there. So he's that's where that. it's a little not little different, that. you know. Um but 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 I you know, again, I don't, I I feel for these defensive players. I understand he's going to get fined. But there's there's like very few ways you're going to be able to stop that. And it's going to be continuing of guys flying over head first and heads are going to hit at times. 
because it's the only thing you got momentum-wise or anything there to stop the momentum of the quarterback sneak. Uh, so, yeah, I, I understand. It's it's not a pretty, and I'm not suggesting we want to hurt people there. I'm just saying it's a hard play for Hicks, and he's got a f very few avenues in which he can create force to actually stop the quarterback there. And and just so we're clear on this, it wasn't the quarterback push play. Whatever you choose to call it, I don't like tush-push. I don't like brotherly shove. Both are a little too cutesy for me. Quarterback push is what I choose to call it, and it wasn't that. It wasn't what it the wasn't that. He do. got pushed in it the back by Christian McCaffrey still. It was just, I mean, McCaffrey showed up late. We can show it again. McCaffrey was there very late on the scene. Yeah. It wasn't the orchestrated, we're going to put a bunch of guys around the quarterback and shove him forward from the snap. At the end, McCaffrey comes in. The overhead shot shows that he's already taken the blow to the head when McCaffrey shows up on the scene. I've watched this thing like 100 times. There's McCaffrey coming in. He's already been hit in the head. And McCaffrey doesn't even push him. He pushes 68. Yeah. So the, it wasn't like we see what the Eagles do with two right. guys around Jalen Hurts shoving him from the moment he gets the ball. And and, and it takes and a big Eagles blow from Harrison Smith, too. Harrison Smith hits him right in the head with his shoulder and head as well. So he takes two good ones yeah. here, right? So, I mean, well, the, the combination it it, of it could do it. The only thing that surprised me is he was fine for the rest of the game. He was fine for the postgame press conference, and it wasn't until on the plane home that he had symptoms. And, look, we know how football players are. He probably fought them off as long as he could. I'm shocked he, he even said anything. That's the first thing I told my he, wife last night. I would go, "Do you mad? can you imagine me going up and saying I, I got a headache to the doctor? They were like, she was like, no. I was like, yeah, I don't know. I would I would have never said anything. Never. I, I was surprised by that. And alone. We're not saying that's right. I know. We're not saying it's right, but yeah. we're saying it's real. Yeah. I remember when Ben Roethlisberger, in a game against the Seahawks, yeah. volunteered that he was having concussion-like symptoms, and there were people who were like, this is a sea change. That's the first like, time ever, right? It's not. Right. Roth Roethlisberger knows he's not getting Wally pipped by anybody. He can tap <laughs> right. out anytime he wants. Right. What, what Brock Purdy's not coming out because now here comes Sam Darnold. So your your human nature. Yes. However you justify it to yourself. This is what we signed up for. This is football. I worry about it later. I'm young. I'm strong. I'm healthy. This will go away. I'll right. be fine. Right. The, the, the things that were part and parcel of the culture for years and accepted and are still part of the culture, but nobody talks about it. It's still there. Yes. He's not going to voluntarily give Sam Darnold a chance to play so well that Kyle Shanahan might do to Brock Purdy what he did to Trey Lance and what he did to Jimmy Garoppolo. Because <laughs> Shanahan just wants to win games with the best guys he can get. That's and right. he won't think twice. If Sam Darnold comes in and has a 158.3 passer rating and looks like the second coming of Joe Montana, do you really think Kyle's going to say, well, I'm sorry, Brock's the starter. we got to go back to Brock. If Darnold comes in and lights it up, Darnold's going to hang around for a while. That That's, that, that, you know, at some point that whole – you don't lose your starting quarterback job due to injury thing. That just went out the window. Anytime a backup's in now and plays well, it's instantly a talking point. It's happening with the Giants and Tyrod Taylor and Daniel Jones. It's happening with the Bears with Tyson Bajant and Justin Fields. And if Darnold would play, if he ends up playing, and I can't imagine that Purdy's going to get cleared between Monday night and Sunday to play, but it's up to the doctors. It's not, not our area, but it's a six-day turnaround. Seems a little quick. If we're going to be concerned about long-term trauma and what if he gets a concussion in this game like the Tua thing last year when right. it was Sunday and Thursday, even though it wasn't a concussion on Sunday, right? But if Darnold plays really well, it, it, there you go. And we, we both know, and you've been saying it for years, Kyle loves Darnold. This is his chance to drive that car, take it for a test drive. Let's see if I've been right all these years about Sam Darnold. And he enters the game if Purdy isn't cleared with an opportunity to beat the Bengals and give Kyle Shanahan something else to think about at the quarterback position. Well, uh, listen, you, I mean, you said a lot of things that are correct, totally. I don't know if I totally agree with you if he just goes out and plays really awesome that he'd continue to play Sam Darnold. I don't think it's there quite yet. Brock Purdy, of course, has been doing some unbelievable things last year into this year. Now, if it was like, you know, maybe consecutive games, something of that nature, you know, okay, maybe I could see that that happening. 
you know, certainly. Uh, but but what he does have a chance to do, none, nonetheless, to your point, Mike, is if he does play well and plays really well and they win the football game and then Brock Purdy comes back and maybe continues to stumble a little bit like we saw these previous two weeks and that continues, yeah, then he's got a chance to – you know, spark a conversation. And then, of course, he's going to put a, a memory in Shanahan's head about, yeah, the performance he had about the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, Shanahan believes in Sam Darnold. We'll see. But, the, I mean, the big point here, you know, whether you know, we argue about the quarterback sneak or all that, is that the, the 49ers are losing their starting quarterback in an, an, an all of a sudden a huge football game for them. Right, a game where we sat there and went, oh, they lost to the Browns. They should have beat them, but they missed the field goal and they didn't play their best. All right, whoa, wait, they lost to the Vikings. Now it's two in a row, and you got the Bengals coming to the town, who are, you know, not exactly going to feel like they're kings of the world right now or on stable ground, especially in the AFC North and the AFC in general. To where this is a kind of a big, I don't want to see a must-win game, but it's getting towards must-win-ish a little bit. When you talk about, hey, they want to keep pace with the Eagles and they want the first seed in the NFC playoffs, and, uh, of course, the Bengals coming off a bye week, that's where it makes it really interesting and, and adds to the intrigue of the game that was already a big game. You know, we talked about this last week with the Chiefs having the 10-day break after a Thursday night game to get yeah. ready for the Chargers and the Chargers playing on Monday night. I know right. that the folks at the NFL – Got a lot of stuff going on when you set the schedule, but we always hear the chest thumping or see the chest thumping and the bragging about the computer modeling and all the things they do to come up with the best possible schedule. How do you end up with one team having two weeks between games and the other team having six days between games? Yeah, you at would least think we give can figure the team that out. It's facing a team coming off of its bye week a full week to get ready. Right. It just seems unfair to the 49ers to have six-day turnaround, Bengals have 14 days between games, and now the 49ers scrambling to figure out who their quarterback's going to be. Um, and regardless of whether or not Kyle Shanahan believes in Sam Darnold, and we know he does, the betters don't. The line moved from the 49ers as five-and-a-half-point favorites now to three-and-a-half-point favorites. So it's a two-point difference from Purdy to Darnold according to DraftKings, and uh, and we'll see. But it is a critical game. It is. The Bengals need it. The 49ers need to stop the bleeding here. Right. The, the Seahawks have two losses. The 49ers have two losses. And, you know, you, you, you're getting into a point where after they destroyed the Cowboys, number one seed for the 49ers. All they got to do is handle the Eagles later this year, number one seed. Now, wild card, potentially, if, if the Seahawks – are in a position to compete with the 49ers, and there's that great four-game four set coming up starting Thanksgiving night where the Seahawks have the 49ers, Cowboys, 49ers, Eagles. Seahawks still a factor, especially with the 49ers losing. They need to turn it around, Chris. And that's why I think there's a chance, given the magnitude of the game, if Darnold plays well in this spot, has a big game in a big spot, and helps stop the bleeding, it gives Kyle something to ponder as the 49ers go into their bye week after this Bengals game, and they come out of it with a trip to Jacksonville to take on the Jaguars. So I just, you know, we've seen all sorts of crazy stuff the past few years, especially with the 49ers quarterbacks. All I'm saying is if Darnold should come out and have a game where we're all like, holy crap, who's that guy? It gives, it gives Kyle something to ponder as he goes into his own bye week and gets ready to take on a very good Jacksonville team. No, it, it, I, I, you know, it, it certainly will make him confident in his backup if Brock Purdy stumbles, doesn't, get, you know, goes through the bye week, continuing to have symptoms, whatever. There, I don't think there's anything he can do this week to do that. I don't. And, and again, I don't know that, but I do know my friend a little bit there, and I know how ecstatic, you know he is and was in the offseason to have a quarterback that he felt like could really run his system and he could frame the team around him too. And the belief in Brock Purdy is real within the 49ers organization, you know, within the, inside the brain of Shanahan, it's real, right? So I don't think he'll go there yet. I don't, you know, I, I, no matter what. Even if he goes 158.3, like you said, uh, I still think he's going to make this. This is Brock Purdy's football team. He's earned the right to do that. 
but it'll put pressure on the situation, to your point. And I think that's what it'll do. And if Brock Purdy doesn't play well or continues to have hiccups like we've seen the last two weeks, like I've said, then, yes, Sam Darnold will be in the back of Shanahan's mind. But I think right now it's still the Brock Purdy show. There's still great belief in him. He played really well the other night, really throughout the game. It was really just the two, right? I mean, he missed the, the two interceptions and he missed the, the one throw to, to Kittle. Right, and other than that, he played pretty flawless throughout the football night, uh, and I don't think the sh- you know Shanahan or the 49ers are, are ready to abandon that, no matter how good Sam Darnold plays this week. And both of those interceptions came after Brock Purdy took yeah. that blow to the head. Right, and and look, even though we saw nothing from him uh, on the sideline, they had a shot of him after the game. He was fine. You, it's hard not to wonder. Yeah, did I that- hear you. Right. Was he fighting that at some level? Was he a little foggy? The bell got rung, right? I mean, we've all been there. Old school. Yeah. Yeah. I've been there where I'm like, wait, my, my bell, my bell was rung. I probably got a concussion. You know, didn't back in those days. I I can remember late in a college game, one kind of having those feelings. I got hit right in the side of the head. We were playing Oregon and I can remember, you know, the day after the game going, you know, the game was kind of fuzzy after that play there, actually. And you know, now that it's almost like it was like a dream. It like wasn't wasn't real there. And that that can happen as a football player. And again, I think the emotions and the intensity of the game and your blood's boiling and everything like that, you know, you can kind of just swipe stuff like that under the rug and you don't really realize it until after the fact and you come down and you start to go, damn, wait, wait, I'm not thinking all that clearly and I'm not as sharp on on my toes with things here. And I am having to think about, you know, what's going on a little bit and and I can imagine. Imagine that that might have happened here with this situation. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.